Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a mouse with your iPad Pro. So a little while back, I decided to upgrade to the latest version of the iPad Pro. I decided to get the 12.9 inch iPad and the main, there were two main reasons why I decided to do this. One was because I wanted to use it for kind of some secondary notes, note taking or sketching and that sort of thing. I jump back and forth between uh, like physical notebooks as well as kind of the digital Apple pencil approach. Uh, but that was kind of the first primary thing. I wanted to be able to use it as a part of my kind of daily workflow, particularly if I was gonna be wireframing websites or had to do some kind of idea sketching or mind mapping, using something like the iPad is really helpful. One of the main reasons for it is because when you're doing sketching digitally, it makes it 10 times easier to be able to archive and to search that later because it's already kind of quote unquote on your computer. With syncing services like Sync or even like iCloud or Dropbox, you can make sure that anything that you're sketching, depending on the app that you're using, is always gonna be able to quickly and easily find its way back to your computer. And the second reason why I decided to get this, uh, this iPad in particular was because of how lightweight and how slim it was. One of the things that I like to do, particularly if I'm going to be traveling to a number of different coffee shops or just traveling in general, I like to be able to keep what I'm bringing with me very lightweight, especially if you're going to be on an airplane and there is extremely limited space and you've just got that little overhead uh, you know, tray that comes down. An iPad works way better than a laptop, particularly for writing. So if there's going to be emails that I'm answering or administrative tasks or that sort of thing, or if I'm going to be writing out an article, if I'm going to be using Bear, which I'll be doing more videos about later, uh, an iPad is great. Plus, for whatever reason, I just so happen to really like the iPad keyboard, so it works great. However, one of the things I discovered recently as I was looking around at a number of different iPad Pro features was the fact that as of their latest update, you can now use a mouse, almost any Bluetooth mouse with an iPad Pro. So this got me a little bit curious. What does that look like? How does that actually work if you're not using a traditional mouse pointer? And what I've discovered after being able to use a mouse, particularly since I've been using a mouse ever since I've been using a computer, is that it actually makes the iPad experience, for me at least, 10 times better. One of the things that I've discovered now is that I'm finding myself using this thing more as a laptop or a secondary laptop, I should say, as opposed to a typical tablet. Okay, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and take a quick look at how to get a mouse set up on your iPad Pro. Okay, so here we are on the iPad and what we're gonna be doing first of all is we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to the settings and you're gonna want to head on over to Bluetooth. Once you head on over to Bluetooth, what you should see, I've already kind of connected mine, but down over uh, towards the lower end here, you'd be able to see something that would say other devices. And this is where you're gonna wanna find your Bluetooth device. Now, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be just kind of switching this on. I'm using the MX Master. I do particularly like the MX Master the best because it actually has like built in, it's got these little buttons as you can kind of see here. I don't know how the camera's focusing but you've got these one, two, three, so you can easily rotate between, like right now it's controlling my laptop, but if I hit this, it's gonna go to number two, and then it's going to go to my iPad. So as you'll be able to see, it's going to pop up here. You'll be able to see that it says MX Master now that it's on, so I should easily be able to connect to that. I've already connected to the, I've already paired these two before, so I'm not gonna do that uh, at the moment. But once you've connected and you've paired your Bluetooth, uh, in the Bluetooth settings, uh, I should say paired your mouth via the Bluetooth, uh, mouse via the Bluetooth settings. Then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna pop on over to accessibility, and then you're gonna wanna go to touch. Under touch, I've already got it, I already have it turned on, but you see, should see an option for assistive touch. You're gonna go ahead and turn this on, and then what you're gonna be able to do is scroll down and under devices, you should be able to see the Bluetooth device that you have connected. Now I've already set all of this up. So I'm just, all I'm going to have to do now that I've already kind of connected this is go ahead and turn my mouse on. So like I said earlier, all I'm gonna have to do, my mouse is on, I'm gonna switch to the second channel, which is then going to 
automatically connect my mouse. And then as you can see here, I've got a nice little quote unquote mouse cursor, which kind of serves as your digital finger, so to speak. So let's go ahead and pop back into settings. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one more time, just kind of because I had this skip around seeing as how my mouse is already connected. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is we're gonna go to Bluetooth. We'll see that it's already connected. If it were not, you'd probably see it down here where you'd wanna connect your mouse. It would appear there. Um, and then once you've got it connected, then what you wanna do is you wanna head on down to, uh, like I said, accessibility. We're gonna go all the way up to the top and then, oh, I'm sorry, not at the top, but kind of this top of this section. Then we're going to go to assistive touch. We're gonna wanna make sure that we turn that on. There's a lot of little options in here that I didn't even know about that you can go through and customize. I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's a lot, not necessarily all of them are specific to a mouse. But like I said, you can manage the different devices, the Bluetooth devices that you've had connected if you've got more than one. You can even go through here and you can uh, connect or specify different mouse keys, that sort of thing. Um, and then down here, kind of the things that you would expect. So you can specify how fast the tracking speed goes. So meaning like how fast, fast the mouse moves around as you move it around the screen. What you can also do is you can customize things like the pointer style. So I can make this thing giant if I wanted to. I wanted this to simulate a mouse as much as possible. So I went ahead and turned that down to the lowest speed. Then they've got things like drag lock, which means when you get around a specific area, it kind of slows down. I don't really use anything like that, um, but you can if you want to. Like I said, there's also kind of some extra things you can do here. One of the things you'll see is that there is a little kind of menu that shows up as you're using as uh, assistive touch. I don't really like that. I just kind of keep it uh, as is. What, it, what this menu does is once you, it's by default, once you right click with your mouse, you can go to these different options and you can actually specify what shows up here. For example, you've got the home screen, so that works really well. Uh, and as you can see, you can go through these different things like the control center, things that you would typically kind of swipe for uh, you can go to those particular pieces. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people use these online and one of the things that people tend to complain about is that they don't necessarily like how the scrolling works. So the scrolling is kind of a little bit quirky. It doesn't work in all the apps. You can't really configure your mouse if you've got kind of like an MX laser or something like, you know, what I'm using here. Um, However, you can kind of use it as though you're using uh, your finger. So like I said, a lot of people have kind of had some complaints here. I actually, as odd as it sounds, I like it. I adapted to this pretty quick. I find myself just kind of using it as I'm using my finger. Like I said, you can right click to get back home. I don't do that. I just kind of go to the bottom of the screen and pull up and I've just kind of gotten used to using it as though it were uh, my laptop. The only thing that I'm kind of having to get used to, so to speak, is I'm having to go through and, uh, you know, having to get used to kind of using a mouse as though it were a finger. Whatever, what I have discovered, however, is that once I've kind of gotten used to that, uh, I've been able to navigate and kind of use this more as though it is kind of a bread and butter kind of standard laptop, which has been endlessly useful. One of the other things that has made this even more useful as well is kind of Having one of the things I've always found kind of annoying about writing on an iPad is that you'll be typing something out, right? And then all of a sudden you have to stop and it's just kind of goes counterintuitive to have to put your finger on the screen to specify something. That's something I've always uh, enjoyed about using a trackpad or a mouse while I'm typing is that I don't really have to take my hands as far off the keyboard. It's just kind of counterintuitive to reach across the table and poke the screen as opposed to just kind of reaching across to a mouse. So. Hello, how are you? And I think I got caps lock on. But it's just nice to be able to kind of, this is just a really quick test. It's really nice just to be able to jump over here and just kind of, you know, move that cursor around a lot more accurately than you would just with your finger. And plus, once again, it's just kind of you're clicking as opposed to using your finger, which is a little bit more what we're used to when it comes to using this type of device. One of the other things which I kind of brushed over briefly, but I wanted to kind of circle back around if you kind of wanted to go in here. And like I said, I already touched on the fact that you could specify the size of the pointer, but you can also go in and you can specify a color. So if you don't want this to be the boring gray or the white, 
Uh, you can change this to any of these colors. The other things you can do as well is you can specify if you want this thing to disappear, let's say, like I said, you're going back and forth between a lot of typing and uh, clicking, and maybe you want that thing out of the way, you can make it hide after a certain amount of sec seconds. I just do the default, which is 15. It seems to work just fine, but you have those options available to you. Okay, so like I said, I know this is just a really quick tip, but once I discovered this, I had to share it with you guys because it's one of those things that has, at least for me, made my iPad Pro 10 times more valuable. What I'm gonna be doing, my current strategy in terms of how I'm gonna be employing the iPad Pro as opposed to the laptop, is I'm gonna split it down two different kind of columns of work. So the first will be my core work. So this is gonna be when I'm gonna be doing design work in Sketch or Photoshop, that sort of thing. I'm gonna be doing video editing. I've seen people edit on the iPad video and audio. That's, I'm not quite sold on it. I'm gonna be using Final Cut Pro and I'm gonna be using my laptop. Also, if I'm gonna be doing any typesetting or anything that requires the Adobe Creative Suite, I'm gonna be doing that. If I'm gonna be doing my web development or design, my coding setup is gonna be better. Connecting with things like GitHub and Coda and all those kind of apps are just gonna work better on the laptop. However, what I'm gonna be doing for the iPad is I'm gonna be using that more for my secondary work. So what I would consider my secondary work is more administrative things. So planning out my day, organizing tasks, using things like Basecamp or Slack, or any type of heavy writing tasks. Like I said, checking email, those sort of kind of more administrative or writing things, I'm gonna be using the iPad way more heavily. And there's gonna be a number of advantages to doing that. It means I'm gonna save the battery life of my laptop significantly since the iPad has an amazing battery life if you're not gonna be doing anything that's really uh, memory intensive. So what I'm gonna be doing or treating this as, particularly now that it has kind of the mouse support, is my secondary kind of lightweight laptop. So if you have an iPad Pro or you're thinking about getting one, hopefully that is a useful little tip for you. Okay, so as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.